Hey, Spitfire people. I say Spitfire people because I've learned that there are some boys out there that are watching the Spitfire Club, but that's totally cool. So I greet you now as Spitfire people. Um, I'm really happy to see you. Happy Friday. I want to tell you about the unit we're starting today, which it's like, oh, we do units? Well, we do now because we are in it for the long haul and this COVID-19 closure is a marathon, not a sprint. Today we're going to start an identity unit where we start to explore the different things that make us who we are and how we can use the things that make us who we are to help us understand who everybody else is too. Um, so we all have an identity, which is the culture, the stories, the interests, and that secret sauce that makes us who we are. So it's like the recipe that creates us. And so we all come with different stories and different parents and different histories and different interests. We are all so different, but also we also have a lot in common. And so we can use uh, the understanding of what makes us who we are to to help empathize with other people. Um, so today, the book that was the most popular was Alma and how she got her name. This book won the Caldecott honor, um, or maybe it was a runner up. It was a runner up after I bought the book, so it doesn't have the shiny sticker. Um, it's a very good book. Um, so, identity. What's your name? Mine's Amanda. And, um, I thought we could start with some movement, so I'm gonna go back there where you can see me, hopefully. Okay, so when we talk about names in Spitfire, sometimes we play a game called name dance. Um, and so we think about the number of syllables in our name. So syllables are the sounds of the rhythm of a word when consonants and vowels come together to create separate sounds. So usually you, you clap syllables, right? So I can clap my name in how many claps? A, man, da. Three, three claps, three syllables for my name, a, man, da. So I want you to clap your name. All right, now let's bounce our names. All right, you ready? All at once, we're gonna say our name and bounce it, um, but don't be too loud if you have siblings sleeping, okay? Amanda. All right. Um, do you want to dance your name? Uh, let me think about my dance. All right. Amanda. In martial arts, to my name. I don't know anything about martial arts. Um, but you could also. Amanda. I love it. Okay. Um. Yeah, so syllables, name, movement, we do it all. All right, um, what does your name mean? Do you know what your name means? Because usually names have a meaning. Sometimes they're religious, sometimes they're from other languages. Um, my name means worthy of love. And I remember very clearly when a teacher took all of my classes, it was a small group, took all of our names and found the meaning of our names and wrote it down for us and gave that to me. I was like, that's not what my name means. She was like, no, that is what your name means. And so I've always felt very proud of what my name means. I don't know that my parents meant to do that, but it's a nice meaning. And most of our names have really nice meanings. Like some names, like the name Deepa means light. Um, a lot of names mean light, actually. Lucy comes from light as well. Um, so, if you don't know what your name means, ask your parents. And if they don't know what your name means, maybe look it up. Um, yeah, you can just Google or whatever platform you use to search your name. Um, usually there's a reason why your parents gave you your name. Maybe it doesn't have anything to do with what the name means, but maybe somebody inspired your name. So what inspired your name? Do you know the story of that? If you don't know, talk to your parents. It's a great thing to discuss at a meal or, um, you know, maybe your parents aren't close by, give them a call um, and see see what your name means. Why, why do you have the name that you have? All right, you wanna learn how Alma got her name? This book is written and illustrated by Juana Martinez-Neal um, and she follows us on Instagram, so she might 
see this. Um, might see this. I did not write this book. I don't own it. Um, I don't own the rights to it, and I highly encourage you to support the author and purchase this book. I'm still getting used to this screen, guys. All right. Alma and How She Got Her Name by Juana Martinez Neal. Alma Sofia Esperanza Jose Pura Candela had a long name. Too long, if you asked her. My name is so long, Daddy, it never fits, Alma said. Come here, he said. Let me tell you the story of your name, and then you can decide if it fits. Sophia was your grandmother, he began. She loved books, poetry, jasmine flowers, and, of course, me. She was the one who taught me how to read. There's Sophia. It's hard to turn the pages at this angle. I love books and flowers, and you too, Daddy. I am Sophia. Esperanza was your great-grandmother, he continued. She hoped to travel, but never left the city where she was born. Her only son grew up to cross the seven seas. Wherever her sailor son went, so did Esperanza's heart. The world is so big. I want to go see it, Daddy. You and me together. I am Esperanza. Jose was my father, Alma's daddy said. He was an artist with a big family, and like many people had like many people had back then. Early each morning, he walked to the mountains and the plazas to paint everyday life. Sometimes I went along. Your grandfather taught me to see and love our people. I wake up early every day and I draw a lot too. This morning I drew a kitty cat for you, Daddy. I am Jose. Pura was your great aunt. She believed that the spirits of our ancestors are always with us, watching over us. And when you were born, she tied a red string around your wrist, a charm to keep you safe. Hello, Pura. It's me, Alma. Candela was your other grandmother. She always stood up for what was right. Escucha, which means listen. Piensa, which means think. Denuncia, which means denounce. Or protesting. I am Candela. I love the story of my name, Dad. No, oh, I love the story of my name. Now, tell me about Alma, Daddy. Where does that come from? I picked the name Alma just for you. You are the first and only Alma. You will make your own story. Alma Sofia Esperanza Jose Pura Candela. That's my name and it fits me just right. I am Alma and I have a story to tell. Alma. So the note from the author, do you want to hear it? A note from Juana. My name is Juana Carlota Martinez Pizarro. My father named me Juana after his mother, Juana Francisca. My mother chose the name Carla to honor the memory of her uncle Carlos. 
My father was a man of decisions, and so when it was time to register my birth, he changed Carla to Carlota on the birth certificate. He was convinced that Juana Carlota was the mighty name he wanted for his daughter. Thanks to that change, I got stuck with what I thought was the most old-fashioned, harsh, ugly, way too sp and way too Spanish name of all in all of Lima, Peru, where I grew up. Little did I know that later on, after I moved to the United States, it would feel unique and remind me every day of where I come from. What is the story of your name? What story would you like to tell? Mm, I love it. So all of our names have stories and all of our na names have stories to tell. Um, so when we talk about identity, one of the things that makes our identity is our name, right? And our name has a history that was significant to our parents. And often what's significant to our parents becomes what's significant to us because they are our family of origin. So um, I grew up in central Kentucky in a very small town and I grew up with a lot of family all around me and I was the oldest of three girls. Um, what else? I'm trying to show you how I dissect my identity. So I want you to take a moment and think about this question. What makes you who you are? Just close your eyes, zone out. Think about what makes you who you are. You got it? You got some ideas? You want to write them down? So if you want to write them down so you don't forget them, just take a moment and jot them down. You can push pause um, and jot down all of your ideas. We're going to come back to that. All right. So um, I should have said this at the beginning. We're going to need a piece of paper. It doesn't matter what your paper looks like. Yellow is my favorite color, so I got yellow paper. Um, any color, lines, no lines, doesn't matter. Just a piece of paper. Um, you probably want part of it to be blank, but even that's not really important. So um, scratch paper, newspaper, anything could work. So pause me, go get that paper, come back. We're going to fold together. All right. Are you ready to make um, fortune tellers? Once upon a time, I forget which, I think it was in Mount Vernon School Girls, wanted to make um, fortune tellers together and we ran out of time and so I said I'll make a video and then I never made a video because I'm not actually very good at making videos so um, I thought today we could return to the fortune teller making um, I could teach you how to do it and then um, inside we can write down what makes us who we are okay so first is this a square no it's a rectangle so the first thing I do is I take this corner make these edges meet nicely so that that corner gets folded in half. I'm just going to make some tiny bumps here so I have a guide. So you should have a shape that looks like this. And we want to make that crease kind of hard because we're going to use it later. Great. So you've got that shape. Now take this edge and fold it tightly over the edge here, like this. And if at any point you want to pause, it's, this takes a few minutes, just pause and then push start when you're ready to move to the next, the next step. I'm making my line really crisp and then I'm going to turn it this way. You see what I did? It was like this. I flipped it over like this. This is a way to make a nice square piece of paper without even using scissors. So you can do that a few times. Actually, when I was a little girl, we used to, I don't think I'm going to like the taste of this, but we used to take our tongues and go, make the paper a little wet. Do you. And then you gently rip the paper along the line. 
Is it going to be perfect? There's no such thing as perfect. Yep, even mine's not perfect. So, no big deal if it's not perfect. Open it up. Ha! A square. That's because a square is made up of two right triangles. Right angle, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So, we're going to take the edge that we have. See the line that's folded? We're going to take fold it to make those lines meet like this. So we're just folding it in half the other way to make two other right triangles. Okay, open up your square. You should have an X folded. Now take this corner, or any corner really, and have it meet in the middle of the two X's like that. Yeah. Ooh, this is hard without a surface. So you're gonna crease it there and bring it across. Next, you're gonna take that corner, have it come down to meet the next one. So my square is not a perfect square. It's a little bit more of a rectangle. So to cheat a little bit, I left some space here. Do you see that? That'll keep us from having overlap. There are ways to work around the imperfections. So I've rotated it, bringing the next corner down, rotated it, bringing the next corner down. Until all four corners are folded in like this. Now we're going to take the side that's got the triangles and we're going to flip it so that now what we see is just a plain square. And we're going to do the same thing here. This corner comes in. Oh, 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 I'm moving too fast. I'm making mistakes. Our hands felt too big to work. And our head was full of all the not right things. Isn't that what we read about in uh, The Most Magnificent Thing? So, again, I've got that gap, it's okay. Fold the next side down, and the next one. So, we should have one side with squares, triangles. Oh, what do we have over here? Squares. So, the side with triangles can be folded over onto itself. I'll do that again. The one that pops out triangles can be folded in half onto itself. Do you want to do it the other way? Funny, it works that way too. Yep. So fold it in half, and then on the outside, you should have two little square pockets on one side and two little square pockets on the other side. We're almost done. Um, so this is your fortune teller. I would give it a little hug, make it crisp so that it works and then pop your fingers into the two little pockets like this oh. okay so on the outside you can write your colors right and then on the inside you can write your numbers whichever numbers you choose so for those of you who have never played with fortune teller before usually what you do is you pick four colors and write those one two three four so i'm not gonna sit, make you sit here while i write colors um do we care if we spell correctly in the spitfire club no spitfire club is not school and so while it is important to learn how to spell things correctly i don't want that to get in the way of your creativity or trying so don't bother asking anybody how to spell a word, if they're, especially if they're busy. Um, just do your best. Orange is O-R-A-N-G-E. So on the inside here, you can write what makes you who you are. And so right here, I could write hmm, short because being very short is actually a big part of my personality in obvious ways and not so obvious ways. Um, here, I could write something about faith um, because I grew up going to church in a family of faith and that has shaped who I am. I could write 
What would you write? What makes you who you are? Are the things that make us who we are obvious? Like I have brown hair, I have white skin, I have brown eyes. Do these things make me who I am? Yes, they do. But there's so many things about me that have nothing to do with what I look like. Um, where I come from, the language that my parents speak at home, um, the languages that I've learned to speak over time, the places I've been, the places I want to go, my dreams, my hopes, the way I like to spend my time, uh, which is with you. So um, think about all of the things that make you who you are and then pick some of them and just write them inside. And it's, it's just a fun way to celebrate who you are while also making a fortune teller. And now you know how to make a fortune teller and you can do whatever you want with it. You can put anything inside of a fortune teller. And in the Spitfire Club, we do because nobody doesn't like a fortune teller. All right, girls. Um, that's it for today. Yeah, I miss you. I'll say that every week probably because it'll always be true. But I can't wait until we're all partying together again. See ya.